Perez or Daniel Perez from Central Coast Kempo Karate. And today I'm going to cover on some ideas of in Kempo Karate why we do uh, certain strikes and also how it affects the body momentum. Because a lot of times people are always saying, well, they're not always going to stand there. And that is true. We're not going to always stand there. So the idea is to be able to hit the opponent with our mass, with the momentums of depth, height, and width, and be able to make our strikes work. So as you see, I have Bob here, okay? And feel free if you, you guys have any questions. But in Kempo, we are aware that the opponent is going to continue to keep moving and continuously trying to hit us, take us to the floor, grapple us, that idea. So we are aware, but we want to hit the most vital targets as fast and as efficient as possible. So I'm going to do a few uh, uh, drills here on Bob. So let me position the bag, uh, the phone here. Okay. Now you guys can see me better. Okay. So in this case, when we throw a punch, we, we not only want to drop our mass and, and use the forward momentum, but we also want to add some rotation. Think of it like a pitcher. A pitcher rotates and pivots their back foot. In the same case, we do the same with our punch, whether it's going to be straight or up. So when I come up and I have the straight line, that's when I make impact and that's when everything comes together on mass. So once I'm here, you have that strike that's a snapping and then you have a locking here. All right. So those are linear strikes. I can shuffle with this. I can be in place and rotate with it. Okay. Or what I could do is use gravity and sink. As I sink and drop and rotate, I'm using three body momentums. Forward, height, up and down, and width, side to side. So again, I'm coming forward, dropping, width, side to side. Now this hand can stay up, and now I can shoot my left hook punch and get my momentum all the way over. Okay, then reverse. So a lot of us like to use reverse motion in Kempo. I don't just strike and then rechamber. I don't just hit and then strike back. I can, that works, but rotating and ripping back. We like to rip and compound. So let's say, for example, I stuck to the mass. Let's say we're in close range, my hands up here. Well, I'm now ripping. I'm now clamping or compounding, right? So I can do an elbow. There's a check. So every strike I do is a checking motion to prevent the attacker from continuously trying to hit me. Now, of course, there's going to be constant movement, striking at close range, using all our body mass, and using our forward and reverse motion. So being able to utilize our three print power principles is a crucial way of also checking our opponent's uh, width dimension, height dimension, and depth dimension. As we know, our height goes up and down. We got to check that. Our width to side to side rotation and our depth forward and back. So how can we check all three? Well, yes, we can then go to manipulation. So let's say I had a ridge hand and I come up from the obscure zone. We call this the obscure zone simply because he cannot see it. If I do this, it's telegraphing. If I'm in close range here and I come under, I'm now utilizing momentum and utilizing an angle he can't see too well, right? So again, obscure zones was a 45 degree from top, bottom to top, right? So now I can then clinch and now we can go into a sleeper hold or let me turn them over. We can go into a rear choke, okay? So again, we have our hand strikes. Then you can follow up with the leg kicks, you know? So I can do like a ball, ball kick here to the ribs, round motion, or a straight thrusting ball too. So again, you have your legs, but then you're also checking upper body on the, on the, the, the height zones there. So three height zones, head to solar, solar to groin, and then groin to legs. We have to keep all three of those in check because of course someone can move, someone can manipulate. Um, and what we'll do is we take it to the floor if we have to. And some Kempo schools, they're not uh, wanting to grapple, but in our case, you have to sometimes know what to do if you're in a grappling position. But if I'm in a grappling position, yes, be aware how you can get out of locks and holds and be aware how you can adapt your strikes, but also be aware of 
there is no rules in a street fight. So yes, for me as a campoist, I'm gonna clinch, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna rip, I'm gonna tear, I'm gonna rupture. That's my goal as a Kempo is to, to defend myself if I have to go that far, right? I'm not going to play the game on trying to um, be better than what the person is good at. So in other words, if the person's a puncher, I'm going to be a kicker. I'm going to make sure that I'm taking what they're missing, their element of missing and fighting, and use it against them. If I'm on the floor, I should, yes, be aware of knowing certain positions on the floor, full mount, side mount, half mount, guard, that idea, but then also be aware that I can use my strikes, pinch, grab, rip, rupture, within knowing that I do have a few seconds to get out of those locks and holds, right? So we try to prevent it but uh, from going to the ground, but if we have to, we're going to be aware. But the idea, again, is how do we use the three height zones? So again, I can drop my mass here. So as I drop right here, I have a dimension of angle which is what we call angle of execution, right? So as I'm dropping my body here, I can just go straight down. And that's my whole body mass dropping, just on a vertical plane. But I can also take that and go into a diagonal plane and have rotation with the dropping here. So now I'm gonna rotate and then I have dropping at the same time. At the same time this is going, my right can rip, my right can hook here, and then I can rotate right back, boom, right back into this strike. Now again, you have dynamic strikes, which are crushing. I mean, stopping the opponent as best as we possibly can, right? You have whipping strikes, stunning strikes that just give a sting, don't stop someone, but enough to maybe distract them, right? No, boom, right to the solar plexus. And then taking another shot maybe to the rib cage, to the floater ribs, to the liver, hitting a vital organ versus just head swinging. Most of the time people in the street want a head swing. Average person, they just want to knock you out. Um, but are more blind fighters. Then you have your trained fighters, like your MMA guys, boxers, things like that. Well, those guys are naturally going to try to fake and use footwork and try to destroy the base of your fighting defense, right? So being able to, what, what, is those guys working on well are they a kicker are they is their left hand always forward is their right hand forward you know if their right hands forward they're going to be a left puncher because they get all the backup mass here right is it someone that's good with both sides can they back up mass with the right too so what i like is in our systems we cover the what ifs to right side left side but again you don't see someone coming up and attacking like this and staying there, and that is true. I got a lot of comments on that. And the reason why we work, think of that as working on routines of motion versus actual work free fighting. Now, once you go to free fighting, that's when you put the gloves on and then you go at it, you try to take each other to the floor, you tap out someone, or you try to hit a vital, or you try to at least get two techniques of a technique on them, on a freestyle. So, you know, like if I can't chop to the throat, I'm going to send my partner to the hospital, right? So we got to practice the safest, safest amount of weight, but that's the most effective. So again, I can maybe go boom, right? I can try to get a little good tap here. Well, what technique is that? In our technique, we call that five swords. I went neck, palm, uppercut, right? So I went one, two, three. That's karate stuff, chop, palm, uppercut, but I'm also hitting dimensions. Height, rotation, width, depth, height, rotation again, which is width, right? So working on gravitational marriage of dropping the weight and putting it all together and create our power principles. And not only that, but with our legs. You know, being able to rotate here our mass, right? We get that mass rotated using those um, round kicks, okay? Just coming in here and then shooting that round kick, giving me a follow-up. Now, creating distance. Well, maybe I have to follow up and then come over here. So. There's so many what-if variables, but again, I want to just talk about the principles of motion, okay? So again, how can we utilize our rotation upper body as a width dimension? How can we utilize our height as a gravitational marriage dimension and how we can utilize depth as forward? Now utilizing all three and becoming one with them. So thank you again for coming, uh, watching. Uh, I don't know if 
there might be comments here. Let me double check. I see quite a few people jumping in and out, but um, I do appreciate you guys coming in and checking it out. If you have any comments, let me know. But um, when we work on a bag with Bob, we tend to just really want to be able to work our timing, okay? It might look like I'm slapping. A lot of times people go, oh, you're just slapping. Well, I'm also checking. When you see our hands open, we're checking. Like I'm checking a limb, trying to prevent that limb or grabbing, grasping onto the limb. But we have to, we think of our checks not just as a smack, but a strike. So I'm gonna hit, boom, with that palm strike and then latch. I never, anytime I'm defending myself and I'm gonna apply contact to someone, it's gonna hurt. My goal is to hurt that person that I'm involved with. I hate to say it in that blunt way, but when you're defending yourself and, and you know it's either you or that person going to the hospital, I'm going to make sure that anytime my hand touches them or my foot or my knee, it's going to hurt them, all right? So that's why you'll see me when I do the smacks. That's, that's not just a smack, but it's a grab. Boom, it's a rip. It's a strike. It's, it's coming back and it's working all those dimensions here. And of course, you know, we, 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 we settle into our stances to really brace our, our footing position. So if I have to drop my body and then go to a takedown, that's what it sets me up for. That's why we have what we call kneel stances, right? Where you kneel. So that sets you up for a takedown, okay? So if I want to choose to go to the ground, that's what I'm going to choose to do. But again, my goal is just to be able to um, talk about the momentums of Height, depth, and width. So again, we call this rotational force, body mass rotation, which can be right hand, upper body. I can rotate just with my upper body like this. I can have my feet involved, rotating the lower half with the upper body. Okay? Okay? I can have my height drop. My height can be an elbow coming down, a hammer, a punch coming down, okay, a palm, a hand sword, uh, again, a front punch, a diagonal collapsing elbow, boom, like a, you know, one of these, these are one of my favorites, where you just, boom, you just come straight, boom, straight through the jaw on that one, if they work, if the in other words, if the, if it's right for the, right timing, or I should say the, if the situation works for that strike, that's why there's so many strikes. The other one is, of course, moment for momentum or um, backup mass coming forward. You'll see this in traditional karate, like one, two idea, right? But that's just working exercise going forward. Again, kicking depth here, but how can you use that? Well, every system in a way uses it. How do you do a takedown? You have to go forward. You got to use your backup mass. And then they go into height. They lift you up. Right? Sometimes they'll work on rotation, which is they'll lift you up and twist the hips. So again, they're working all three dimensions. Those dimensions is what we do in Kempo is how can we take that to the floor? And that's really an ultimate goal to become a all around martial artist. Be aware of how do you can generate power from standing, from close range, far range, um, from a locked position and from a floor position, right? Um, of course, weapons is another entity. How do you work the dimensions on against weapons? That's something for next time. That's a subject for next time. But in this case, again, we always utilize depth. So you're always going to get power by never just swing an arm. Never just rely on this, right? Rely on putting the whole hip, the elbow, anchoring, and putting everything. If I was just going to do a straight vertical uppercut here, I'm not just using my arm like this. That gives me no power. But if I take my body and I shift my hips and drop, I get more depth out of that. I get more solid striking methods of execution where I'm not going to go to a bag. I'm going through the bag. And same with an opponent. I'm not going to just use my arm and do this. this. There's no power there. But if I can get my hips drop and every time, right? Turning my hips and hitting, I get my body to respond and connect the energy all together. It's what we call directional harmony, right? Directional harmony gives us the ability to uh, strike and not waste motion. 
again in camp, we don't like to chamber. I don't like to lift my hands and then come up. I don't like to wind and then hit because then you see it coming. How many, how many times have you seen this? Just this, right? This is a little better because it's linear. It goes from its point of origin, right? But you can only do so much on cross strikes and rot circular strikes, even if you're working your 180 dimension here, right? I can work my 180 dimension. Okay, so I'm working my angles here, right? But at the same time, how can we change that with elbows? Well, I can come forward with an elbow. I can come, I can come overhead with an elbow, right? So I have all these different strikes that can work together. So this is my goal sharing on video, uh, our Kempo idea. I know we get a lot of criticism as a Kempo is because a lot of times that won't work. They're just standing there or um, they're just freeze framing or they're not, you know, they're not fighting back. And it is totally true. Nobody is going to ever stand there. But we have to work patterns somehow. It's like playing a, a musical instrument. See it like that. So if you guys play music, the first thing you learn is basics. One, two, you know, A, B, C, you know, your, your Bs and Cs and D notes and all the different notes. You don't go right into free flowing, right? You don't go into these big songs yet. You have to practice one hand and coordinate the other hand, right? Well, in Kempo, it's the same way. That's why we freeze frame some of the techniques to get our, our, our coordination, our fluidity up. But we do strikes that some other systems don't do, which is we like to rip, claw, rupture, gouge. We like to do – we can take it to the extreme measure if we have to, if our life is in danger. So, again, like I said, here's an ear. I'm ripping the ear. I'm pulling onto that ear to set up a strike to the neck, Right. Um, and those, those are the things that we're trying to figure out is how to flow into it. So how you flow is that's why you'll see us do circular motion into linear motion. So we have our backup mass. So if I struck somebody up to the chin, let's say I hit them in the chin with an uppercut, the lower half might come up. So if the lower half comes up, then I can take advantage of this borrow collision impact. If his head's, if I hit him in the back of the head and his head's coming forward, well then here's my palm strike to match that impact of force. So we call that borrow force, right? Uh, it's no different than two cars going head on collision. I mean, that's a greater a massive impact versus one car being stopped and the other one hitting, right? So in this case, if I am gonna hit a stop opponent, then my goal is to put the backup mass, which is you have your diesel truck, and then you fill the bumper of the diesel truck, and then you fill the trailer of that diesel truck afterwards. So not only is this person filling that, if I just shot my hand, here's the bumper, but if I rotate my, my upper body, now I'm putting the whole trailer behind it into the, to the strike. So that's my uh, word for today, guys. I hope you appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. You can always directly message me. I love talking about this stuff. And love what ifs and i love all kinds of martial arts just not kempo but i appreciate all the martial arts and and um enjoy meeting and talking to fellow karate people so or martial artists i should say thank you again um I hopefully i'll try to do some more live videos and and i'll get a body and then i can do some techniques on a person and that way we can all discuss it together on the chat room uh thank you for for um seeing the video Follow me for some more content. I have a YouTube channel, by the way, as well. Uh, check out my link tree, and then um, you can access all the social, social media links I have. All right. Thank you. You guys take care. Appreciate the love. And uh, be well. Be safe out there. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.